My name is Aaron Graber with Ventrac, and today we've got a special project. I'm with Brant Moore, who's one of our video editors, and as you can see, he's got his bike with him. We are at a bike park, Austin Badger Park in Medina, Ohio. So the reason we are here today in the first place is because of Brant. He has the connection with Brian Wick, who we'll talk to a little bit later, and he is the person who initiated this project and is managing it. Brian posted on the internet asking if anyone had connections to equipment, so naturally being a video editor at Ventrac, came in, presented the idea, and now we're here. We've got a lot of equipment today, and we're gonna be doing some different tasks, working in the bike park and around the facility as well. It's a unique area because it used to be a golf course, so there are miles of cart paths that we have to maintain, and we're gonna do a little trimming on those with the boom mower and tough cut. We've got the power rake, which is what we're gonna use in this bike park area primarily, and then we're gonna use the bucket as well. As you'll see later, the rain that we've had here has washed out some of the faces and berms of these corners. So we're basically here today to come in and fix those. And at the end of the video, Brant and I, who also, by the way, he has his own channel. What's your channel's name? It's just my name, Brant Moore. Moore. Okay, and we'll put a link in the description down below. So check him out, he does a lot of cool BMX stuff. Brant is super into BMX and I'm super into mountain bikes. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, some special bike stuff. So we're, we might do a race, I don't know. He's gonna do some tricks probably. Maybe we'll do a race from the top to the bottom. I don't know, maybe we'll do a race from the bottom to the top so you lose, we'll see. Okay, this is the first spot we're gonna work and I'm gonna tell you why the Ventrac is perfect for this. So we actually have the dual wheels still on with the power rake because obviously the slope of this is pretty extreme in some spots, so we wanna make sure we're safe. But more than that, the machine, because of the flex frame, will not do any damage to this as I'm working on it. If you tried to get a track skid loader in here, and especially a wheeled skid loader would be completely no good, but if you tried to get a skid loader in here and do this, as you're turning, you'd be ripping up all the progress that you made. So there's really no better machine for this particular task of finishing this out than the Ventrac. If you look over here, this is what we're mostly concerned with. You're coming off of this jump here, this base, and then as you land, you're landing right on this downside, and it's super uneven. You've got rain washouts right here, and that's just, that's just sketchy for people riding it, so we don't want to put anybody in a dangerous scenario. But we're going to clean this up, smooth it all out. I'll call it right now. Uh, we won't have any problems with this. Ventrac will be awesome for this particular spot. <laughs> As you can see, it's a lot better. We got rid of um, all those ridges. It's so much better. We did also pull up some big rocks that would cause problems in the future with more washouts and packing down and stuff. So that's good, get, the, get those out of there. Yeah. Ultimately, you can still see a little bit of wave here. Since we're gonna stick to the, the power rake to, to deconstruct everything first, mm -hmm. we'll do, man, these horse flies are crazy. <laughs> um, we'll keep doing that with some other spots and then we'll come back and we'll actually take a bucket and put some dirt additional dirt in here i mean you do a lot of digging since you're bmx yeah. guy most of this stuff is always done by hand this is an entire day for job. fix for fixing stuff legitimately anyway. an entire day job for yeah one person so this it's like the time savings is incredible to actually get something done but the before of this is like dirt that you could not dig you on with the shovel with you'd have to wait till it rained and then you'd have to be in here in kind of muddy dirt. And then he comes in and does it in 20 minutes. You know, I think if you guys work long enough, you can get this whole area flat. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be perfect. You want to try it again now that it's smoother? Yeah, let's do it. I don't know if I want to jump the whole thing with the loose dirt quite. Right. But we'll see. So much. 
much better. I'll be honest, I didn't anticipate jumping the whole thing. Landed yeah. right where there was probably a rut before. Yeah, there was some cross ruts coming across there before. So we got a little bit of the power raking done. We're gonna come back to that and still clean up. But first, right now, I'm gonna grab the boom mower and I'm gonna come along these areas and trim these trees. Aaron, you're gonna run into some problems here with time. You wanna break down between operators who want me to run some stuff. Once you do that, I could grab tough cut. And any grab tough cut on that. I could do that and one of these guys could jump back and forth between the two of us. you run in your tires brand 80. 80 yeah so like they're rock hard so every little rut or rock that you hit is just jarring you want it to be as smooth as possible what we're doing now is we're just driving around anywhere that we see rain ruts that are especially coming down off of landings or transitions towards the faces of jumps anything that might upset the handling of a bike and doing our best to smooth them out something just because you don't have the ability to finesse that lip you can't really place dirt specifically with the power rake so the goal with that thing like I said before is just to get rid of ruts which we did in this spot and then we smooth this side piece off it's gradual now so you can if you get a little bit out of sorts you can still kind of work your way back into the into the line and then this loose stuff that's left we just want to place enough at the top that we're making sure that we're not getting rid of any of the lip either for the takeoff or the landing. That way we don't mess up any of the geometry of how the jumps were built. So we'll just keep going on the really rough stuff and then we'll go back and finesse I think the, the first half of it looks pretty good. I think it's just this from pretty much here to the rest of it that yeah. needs it. It looks amazing. Like a chocolate cake. Yeah. I'm gonna scope out these and as long as they're good, I'm gonna go grab the bucket. So I just noticed something on the way up here, and it's worth talking about because it's nice that this tractor is so small and light. First of all, like you can drive across the wooden bridge over there that connects the parking lot to the park area which you couldn't do with most equipment that's doing construction level stuff. But, so they had to have a, a bulldozer to do the first excavation of this, understandably. Uh, but they drove it across the concrete and just cracked it all to pieces. I don't think there's any way to get over there without driving across the concrete, so it was just part of the game they had to do it. But with equipment like this, it's so low impact that you'll never have issues like this to get in and do some of the things that otherwise would take a mini X, maybe even a small dozer, just to have the stability on, on the sideways faces of things. Uh, to be able to do that with a piece of equipment that's very small and light like this is just nice. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is use the bucket to grab some loose dirt, and we're going to 
put it in some of the areas of the berm and these landings that have a little bit lower spots. We cleaned up the deeper of the ruts, but there's still some spots where if we got a heavy rain today, we'll probably see some, some more washouts. So we're just gonna put more dirt on that, pack it in a little bit, smooth it over with the bucket. And then in some of the tighter spots where there's like a, there's one face over there that's pretty torn up, I'm gonna use the bucket to, to resurface that face so it doesn't kick anybody weird. And uh, make sure that we're that we just have a safe and like jump through. Jump now. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, okay. that's an important one. Yeah. I've never ridden this stuff before. You might not, you might not seem like you need to do any more work than this, but even a tiny little like divot. Just like really wreck your line up the face of the dog, so we're gonna get it as smooth as possible. So Brent, tell me why you're going for the dry loose dirt on the side. It dries up the clay a little bit instead of being super wet. And you can see how hard it is to shape. That's why it's so hard to shape the bucket as perfect as it needs to be to hit it smooth. Right. What's your favorite part of digging? Riding it when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> now I think what we can do is throw some dirt in the low spots and then have you go over it one time. With the tractor? And it'll be good, yeah. Okay. It's amazing. I can't believe the, how much well, it's done like, and how many hours of work I've saved. This is insane. I would have been out here for a month. So we've been working most of the day here. Uh, Brant and I have been going back and forth, making some landings safer, uh, taking out some ruts. Right now, we have now got Brian Wick with us. And uh, Brian, why don't you just go ahead and tell us who are you and what are what's what do you have to do with this project? Yeah, great. Um, so my name is Brian Wick, like you said. Uh, this is a project that we started about 43 days ago. Uh, we got in touch with the community about building a bike park here. Uh, they had already started uh, mountain bike trails here, but we kind of wanted to take it to the next level. So I reached out to a couple people within the township and they really got on board with kind of my vision of what I wanted to build here. I wanted to build more of a destination type park for people to come in here and be able to ride, spend time with their families. 
uh, entice people from the community to come over here and spend time with their kids. Once they put in, they have a coffee shop down there, and they put a, uh, a restaurant with a, with a microbrewery up there. It just became a real good fit to, for the mountain bike and, and cycling community to come in here. I started about, I guess it's been seven, eight years ago now, over my old house. I had some property over there. And we started just holding these little jams, and uh, people would come out, and literally from all over the world, we had people as far away as Australia would show up. That's awesome. And then we sold the property, and then uh, here we are. You know, we just I just kind of reached out, and everybody got on board, and. Uh, yeah, here we go. Obviously, you know, video games and screen time and cell phones have taken up a lot of um, the youth time at this point. So this is just another way to get people out here, out here and bring families together. This one father that we talked to, he has I think a 19-year-old and a 9-year-old, and he never could bridge the gap. Yeah. You know, with his with his kids, and now he can. He they come out. They're here all the time now, and it, that that for me is a huge payoff. What we wanted to do today was come out and, and do our part to help out with whatever we could and just use the equipment in the most efficient way possible to minimize the amount of handwork that goes into things, give people the safest place to ride, yeah. spruce it up a bit, and help help get this project along uh, into the closing stages of what it, what it will look like when it's totally finished. Bringing your guys' equipment out here has saved us hundreds of man hours today. Hundreds. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Um, I, I can't thank you guys enough. It's really a cool, cool little spot nestled in. Uh, really populated yeah. residential area. We're, we're flanked by a highway on one side, right. so it's, it's easily accessible. Yep. And, uh, gives a lot of people a place to come. Yeah, the, ex the exit is only a couple miles from here, right off of Route 71, so it's easy to get to. Uh, we have hotels, we have retail, there's restaurants, everything you could possibly want. What are some resources that you can give people to, to just be aware of this project? Sure. Um, on Facebook, there's that we have a page called Wix Outlaw Promotion and Events, and that's our that's the hub for all of the events that we run here. Um, so go check that out. You can look it up on Facebook. Uh, you'll find links to our GoFundMe. This project is completely privately funded. Um, so everything is either through donations or um, volunteers. So anything, so every, all the links are on that page, and that's really the main place to find everything. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks for letting us come right. out today. Thank you so much. And uh, we got a little bit more work to do. I know Brant's going to show off some skills. We're going to get the tractor involved a little right. bit. Now that we're done, we kind of figured it'd be fun to do a race from the top to the bottom. Back to the top. Probably back to the top, because I think to I'm going to need it to make up time. We want to do a bike check first, because that's always fun. Yeah. What are you riding? This is a Sunday BMX bike, 20 inch. What's it weigh? 27 pounds. 27 pounds. Yep. And you got, how many gears do you got? One. Like a bunch? One gear. Just, oh, one. Okay. Yeah, just one. Well, I got 11. My bike weighs 23 pounds, even though it's a lot bigger. <laughs> It's a, it's a giant anthem. The seat post is taller than your whole bike, which is bad for this. So we both have a pretty terrible bike, right? Not, not terrible, not I terrible, guess. Not terrible, but this is not more ideal. designed for probably like a 26 inch dirt jumper. No excuses. No. One of us is gonna lose. And we're both gonna have fun. That's right. If, we, if I do bad enough, then I might drag him into the woods later, and then I'll just ride away from him so I can feel better tonight and sleep better. Let's go. What's with the outfit? Yeah, oh, gee, oh so, I, so I gotta address the outfit? Okay. Gotta address the outfit. Everybody wants to know, why you gotta dress like Lance Armstrong? Okay, look. Tight clothes are just cooler. Not cooler like, like I'm cool, cool. Like, they're not hot. So this thing is like, it's like wearing an extra layer of skin. If I he sweat, it cools down. I'm comfortable. Right? I am sweating Look at this, this cotton t-shirt. Because this. cotton t-shirt. This thing's going to weigh like six pounds. Big shoes, I can't ankle braces, that. shin guards, knee pads, helmet. I'm sweating. I'm not counting on leaving the ground, so I'm not counting on hitting the ground. <laughs> That's just the difference, all right? <laughs>
Uh, pedals too. I guess we got different pedals. Oh, he's so clipped in. I have I, flat pedals. I lock in, so if I go down, I'm I'm stuck to this bike. And my pedals just <laughs> are normal. He can just pedals. push it away and, and let the bike. His bike will make it if he throws it away. This thing will crack into pieces. I'm riding this thing into the ground if it goes there. Hard, set, go. Oh yeah. Oh, that's not course. This is closer than I thought it was gonna be. Officially, I so was, we, cha we changed the rules right at the end so I'd have a shot. Officially, the race turned into back up to the top of the hill and park your bike on the starting gate. <laughs> but you beat me pretty handily otherwise. I was in the lead until the last corner. <laughs> and then you got up on that gate quicker than me. I got a couple more gears than he does. We were pretty winded though, that was a lot of fun. I only hear one of you winded. <laughs> yeah, you look pretty all right, Mr. <laughs> gears. All right, so good day overall. We got a lot of work done with the tractor. We saved a ton of hand labor, um, had a lot of fun. We legitimately turned what would have been days of hours of hand work yeah. into a day of one like day tractor work. Still a lot to do yet, so maybe we can get out and help again. But for now though, it's in pretty good shape for the upcoming event. Brent and I are gonna- The other project series. Oh yeah, yeah, I Here. forgot. So we have a whole YouTube channel, obviously. <laughs> it's all tractor stuff. There's, there's not any other bike stuff. If you do want more bike stuff, even though you can't find it on our channel, you can check out Brant's channel, at Brant Moore. He's got some pretty good clips on there that have gone around the internet in some, some pretty viral places. So check it out, lots of cool stuff, and we'll see you next time. Not made for this. Take me to the jumps.